What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are gonna be vibe coding. That's right, we're gonna be building out an entire app with ChatGPT and Xcode, and we're gonna be using the new ChatGPT feature that is integrated into the new Xcode beta. So we're not gonna to have to go to chatgpt.com at all. ChatGPT is gonna be able to write code directly in Xcode for us, and this is gonna be awesome. So I'm gonna show you guys what we're gonna be building. So here's the app. Let me just kill it and relaunch it. We are going to be fetching some information from an API, loading it into our application and displaying it on screen. And we are gonna be doing so without writing a single line of code ourselves. We are gonna be using this awesome brand new chat GPT feature inside of Xcode. So you guys are gonna need the Xcode beta if you wanna code along with me, but if you don't have that or don't have access to it, don't worry, you can just watch. This is going to be a pretty short and sweet video just showing you how awesome the new chat GPT feature is within Xcode. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So to get chat GPT opened up within Xcode, you guys will notice that at the over on the left side here, we have our project navigator icon and then we have this new chat GPT icon. And we have, I believe, a history of our conversations here within this Xcode project. And here is our input field. So I'm gonna start with the UI. I'm simply gonna say, build me a list of users and I only want to display username and email. And we're just gonna go ahead and hit enter and we're gonna watch ChatGPT do its thing. So it's clarifying our request first, and then you guys will notice that it creates a user structure for us, it creates some mock user data here, and then it creates a list for us. And we didn't have to touch anything. I didn't have to go to chatgpt.com and copy and paste code. I did this all within Xcode, and it's literally that simple. So next up, Let's go ahead and say, imagine that we wanna just embed this in a navigation stack and give it a navigation title. So I'm gonna say embed this in navigation stack and give me a nav title of users. Enter. And we'll notice that it's just gonna beautifully modify the code with basically zero effort on our end, right? So now we have a navigation stack with a navigation title. This is pretty cool. So next up guys, we want to get the process started of fetching some information from our API. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring the API up really quickly. We are gonna be using the fake store API. So you guys can just go to fakestoreapi.com and you can scroll down and select users. And this gives us some simple documentation of what a request would look like and what the response body would look like. So we basically already have ID, username, and email, right? Like if we go back to Xcode, that is, is exactly what Xcode created for us with this user structure. That just sort of happened to conveniently work out. If you have more of a custom model, you could just paste in what a JSON body would look like and tell ChatGPT to generate a model from that. But essentially what I'm gonna do now is say create a service file that fetches users from fake store api.com and just hit enter. So ChatGPT should be smart enough to look at the fake store api.com and see what the URL needs to be and all of that stuff and figure it out for me. So let's go ahead and see what that gave me. So we have our user service. You guys see that it created a file for us automatically. And let's see, we have this API user. Um, I don't think we really need that, but you guys will see here that it automatically figured out the endpoint for me. It creates this user's URL, and then it fetches my users using async, uh, in a, using the new modern Swift concurrency framework, which is super, super awesome. We didn't even have to tell it to do any of that. It just did it automatically. Um, there are some things I don't like here. I don't think we need to have this API user, so we can just delete that, right? I don't even think it used it here. So that's interesting. Um, yeah, so let's go back to ChatGPT and tell it we don't need to use this API user. Let's just use the user struct you created before. So let's see what it gives us back there. And it looks like that resolved itself. We just need to make sure that users conform to decodable. So another really cool feature with ChatGPT here with an Xcode guys is if I hit this error, 
Um, we have this new generate fix for issue option. So we can just hit generate and chat GPT is going to uh, look at that error and try to come up with a fix for it on its own. And so that would have obviously been a pretty easy error for us to fix ourselves. but let's look at what ChatGPT did. It says, I've updated your user struct and content view to conform to the decodable protocol. So let's go ahead and go back to our content view and we'll see that our user guide now conforms to the decodable protocol and that's a very simple fix. So here, let's take a look at this. Immutable property will not be decoded because it is declared. Okay, so let's go ahead and see if we can generate a fix for this issue. So I believe here that the ID is an integer. Um, let's see, okay, yeah, we don't wanna do all that. So what I'm gonna do is say, I'm just gonna go ahead and give ChatGPT what the JSON body of my user is going to look like. And that way it knows how to fix this. So I'm gonna go here and say, adjust my user object in accordance with this JSON body paste that in there. We don't need the password field. So this is, this is obviously how you would, you know, work with some sort of custom object. You just paste in what it's going to look like coming in from your API and let's let chat GPT do its thing. And we can see here guys that it adjusted that ID property to be an integer and also adjusted our mock users here. So this is looking really, really good. Now that we have our service that is actually fetching that information from our API, let's go ahead and implement a view model that will inject this service into, and then we'll implement that view model inside of our view and get this to come full circle. So in my chat GPT window, I'm going to go say, create a view model and inject this service into that view model and implement the view model in the view and call the fetch users func to display them. So another important note here is that knowing how to prompt this stuff is a key component in how good the code is generated is going to be, right? So if you don't know what you're doing, and you're just trying to get something to work, the chances of you just get ending up with absolute dog shit code is really high. So I always tell people that you need to make sure that you know what you're doing and could write this code yourself and you're not using ChatGPT as a crutch, you're mainly using it as a helper. So ChatGPT can act as the junior engineer to my senior engineer, the senior engineer being me, and I can have it generate code and fix it or adjust it as needed. And you also need to be good at telling it what to do. So. All right, guys, let's see. Um, we have an invalid redirectoration of user service protocol. That's interesting. Where else would that be defined? It's probably in the view model. Yeah, so we don't need this. So it's interesting that it, gener it created an error for us that we had to fix, right? Which is kind of annoying. Um, and these errors are interesting as well. Let's see, invalid redeclaration of user view model. So it created a second user view model here, which we definitely don't want. And here it's saying that it does not conform to the correct protocol. So I'm just gonna replace this with the observable macro and remove all of these published guys. And all of those errors should go away. It does not conform to that function. Okay, let's go ahead and fix this. So let's say generate fix for issue. We can delete this comment as well. So yeah, guys, now we should be good to go. Uh, the reason it wasn't working before was because this function was declared as a static function and it doesn't need to be static. We also don't need this to be static. We could just mark this as private. So as you can see, like I said, um, and I'm gonna keep making this point, um, yeah, we don't need to say self here, is that the code it generates isn't perfect. And one could argue that I could have typed this out faster than ChatGPT wrote it and all of the prompting I had to do and then all of the fixes I had to make myself or I would have in turn had to tell ChatGPT to make. 
So it definitely needs some like smoothing out and they need to iron out some of these iron out some of these kinks. But overall, you can see the power of it. Like we're creating a really simple app here. If this service needed to be like 100 lines of code and ChatGPT could generate that for me, that would save me a lot more time, right? Potentially, right? We're still on the cusp of understanding whether or not AI is actually making us more productive or not. There are studies that actually show that it is not. And I will do a separate video on that later. But let's go ahead and see what this gave us. So I definitely like that it created a protocol and it makes this user service conform to that protocol. We could have simply done this instead and delete this extension that's kind of unnecessary. And our user view model injects that service with dependency injection, so that's great. That's what we wanted to do, but also keep in mind, I told it to do that, right? Um, and then it creates this is loading property and this error property. And here we set is loading the true, error is nil. Uh, it does the do catch stuff, users, try await service.fetch users, self.error, perfect, is loading, is always set to false. Very, very nice. Okay, and then back in our content view, we can see that here we have if view model dot is loading, we show a progress view, else if let error, else we show the list of users, and it initiates a task using the task modifier and says await view model dot fetch user. So that's pretty perfect. Um, here, we just need to make this a state property now instead of a state object property. And that is literally it for the application, guys. Like that's how quick and easy you can put together an app with ChatGPT um, that, you know, fetches some information from an API and displays it. So like that actually, that has a networking layer and that layer of complexity. It implemented some error handling for us and all of that good stuff. And we could even tell this to write unit tests for us and all of that. So definitely a very powerful feature here, but as you can see, it definitely needs some work. Like one thing I would modify here that I could potentially tell it to do right now is instead of having this complex sort of else, uh, if and else if let and else block, we would wanna introduce some sort of enum here for like a content loading state. So let's see if we can do that. Say, I don't like the if and else if blocks here, let's implement a content loading state enum. And once again, just to continue making this point, if you're a junior developer or not as experienced, you might see that and think it's fine, right? But that logic isn't necessarily scalable and it's much better to implement something like an enum to manage your loading state here as we can see that it did perfectly, right? So you definitely need to have the knowledge to tell this thing what to do and how to modify and tweak the code or else you're just gonna end up with a code base that is a complete mess. So, and th this that has a compounding effect. The more shaky the foundation that your code base or your application is built upon, the harder it's going to get to scale, debug, and maintain. So you need to make sure that you're writing good code from the start or else you're gonna end up in a lot of trouble later on. And lastly, before we wrap this video up, guys, I wanna show you another cool feature. So I'm gonna hop into the view model, which is where it created this loading state enum. And if I hover over to the left side of like the uh, code lines here, you'll see this little chat GPT icon pop up. So if I click on that, it has two really cool features here where, or you know, actually a couple, where you can ask, ask it to explain this code for you. And you can also generate documentation for it. And you can generate a playground or a preview for it as well. So I'm just gonna hit explain. So we see that it automatically created a prompt to explain this section of code here. So what is this? This code defines an enumeration in Swift named loading state. So basically it just breaks down everything it just did. So if you're ever unclear about the code that ChatGPT is giving to you, you can ask it to explain it for you and you can even ask it to write documentation for you. Um, I don't really know how useful the documentation feature is if you can simply ask ChatGPT to explain it for you on the fly. It kind of removes the need for documentation in my opinion and documentation just makes your code really messy and adds a lot of comments and all that stuff. So I would prefer to use the explain feature over the documentation feature. But that's gonna wrap it up for this video guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel and check us out on appstuff.io. So we have a bunch of awesome professional courses and let me just go ahead and show you that guy, show you guys that stuff. If you wanna continue your learning with us here, 
prep for interviews, build app clones, expand your knowledge of the fundamentals here. We have a ton of awesome pro courses that you can access for either a one-time purchase or you can access all of this stuff by becoming a member. So for a monthly fee, you guys can access all of the courses as long as you're enrolled. Whenever you cancel, which you can do anytime, you would lose access to those courses in the GitHub repositories and stuff like that. So the pro courses definitely give you an advantage, an edge over what you get on YouTube, guys. The YouTube stuff is free content. It's more limited. The pro courses that we have on the website that you have to pay for are much more in-depth and go a lot more advanced with uh, the you know topics within app development. So... Uh, make sure you guys check that out. Like and subscribe to the channel. Let me know what you thought of this video. And let me know what you think below in the comments of this new feature in Xcode. And let me know what else you guys want to see come to the channel later on. Thanks for watching this one. Peace.